quick uh, overview of the agenda. We're going to start by talking about traffic signals setup and geometry. Um, just as a quick refresher from if you've missed our uh, first two sessions of PTV talks uh, for Bistro, we went over you know uh, setting up the network as well as setting up intersection control. Um, and then we're going to go into global settings for optimization, traffic control workflows for intersection settings, some local optimization strategies and then we'll get into coordination groups network signal optimization and time space diagrams and as levi mentioned we're going to start with a little bit of refresher from the last session and i'm going to show you how quickly you can create a signalized intersection and modify the geometry in vistro um, so if you're just joining us and you haven't seen the last two series this will be a, go a good recap of what you missed and just to start too, my mouse is this big yellow thing just for visibility. That's not a Vistra feature. So I'm gonna code my first intersection on the, on the west side of the model. And to just drop in a new intersection, we go to the signalized intersection button up here at the top and we can drop a signalized junction just by clicking right on the base map. And it drops a template um, for a signalized intersection. So zooming in a little bit more on the map, you can see that the northbound direction is one way. So what we can do is delete the southbound lane configuration by going over to this workflow area and just click that lane configuration out, then click OK. And then you can see that that, that southbound movement has been removed. Uh, the northbound movement is a shared left through plus an exclusive right lane. So I can go to northbound, click on the lane configuration, do a shared through left, and then an exclusive right lane, click OK, drag that leg down a little bit. And then the east and the westbound are both a left plus a through plus a shared through right. So you can do this both at the same time by dragging over with this multi-edit feature on the lane configurations. And you can make a left, a through, and a through right very easily in Vistro. Click OK. And you can see that those lane configurations have been made. Uh, and now I can use our shortcuts, uh, Control A or Control W to go into a transparency mode in Vistro. And you can see that now you can kind of see through the, the network editor and see the base map below. And that will allow me to connect up the legs a little bit uh, better and then match between the curb lines and the network. So you can see how quickly it is to, to code intersections in Vistro using our node-based system. Um, one other part is you can see that this northbound leg has two lanes. To quickly add that lane, you click on this leg grip handle here, and then you right-click to open up the context menu, and you can say, add through lane and then it will just simply add that second lane to to the model but and before we set up the signalization we need to um, assume some volumes here so we can turn on our volume figures by using the show turning movements um, here we can turn on the base volume input and you can see that we have volume arrows um, for the turns again I'm just going to do this multi-edit um, I'm just going to assume a volume of 50 for the turns. And so it basically puts 50 in for everything with the multi-edit. And then for, we, we need to balance with the adjacent intersection. So we have a graphic parameter that will show the balancing here. It's the show balance flows. You can see that there's a difference between the two intersections. So we need to add 523 cars eastbound at this intersection. So I can click on the through arrow and it highlights the grid over here in the right place. 
and I can type in 523. And when I do that, you can see that this is now turning green, showing that the flows are balanced. And in the westbound direction, I need to add 589 vehicles. And I'll type that in, 589. And you can see now this direction has turned green, meaning our flows are balanced. And so I'm going to turn off that graphic parameter now. Um, now, next, let's assume that our main line mainline left turns are protected only left turns. So in our signal workflow, it's the traffic control workflow, which is this button. In this workflow panel, if we go down to the phasing and timing area, we have control type. Uh, I can change the mainline lefts. This is the east and westbound. I can change those to protected and then to protected. And you can see there's a placeholder for the signal group or the phase um, right there. And then we're gonna leave the northbound movement as permissive only. And with that set, we're ready to click the default signalization button that we went through on the last training. That button is right here, create default signalization. It looks like the, uh, the traffic light. You click on that and you're prompted to be able to set lead and lag settings. We're gonna use lead settings and then click okay. And after I click okay, it uh, does a real quick local optimization of the signal with the traffic that we've put in uh, based on the global settings that we have set up, which I will talk about in a few seconds. Um, but you can see that the phasing is defined based on the NEMA standards, and now you have a time-space diagram at the signal. Okay, so you can see really quickly how fast it is to, to make an intersection with Invistro, and that's uh, a, a really good benefit for the software. Now, going into global settings, um, there's, there's a few parameters that I, I would like to show you to help the optimization process. Um, if you go under the edit and then go to global settings, this will open up the global settings menu in Vistro. And then you can scroll down to the bottom, which is summarizing the signal settings that I'm going to show. Um, here you can find the major flow direction as east-west. So in this example, I have an east-west corridor, so it makes sense to make this east-west here. And you can see with the default signalization that I made, the east-west come in as the major flow. And then um, we, we want to do this because this, this helps define the NEMA sequences in, in, in the orders. You can see right here, it says northbound signal group major. So if northbound was the major group, then northbound would be phase two. And if eastbound signal group is the major, which is our case, the eastbound signal group would be two. And these other ones in the middle are just some logics that that say if you have a diagonal link that's northwest or northeast bound, what logic should it pick to define the signal group? And of course, all of these are, are editable. You can click on each one and there's a drop down menu to, to list the major phases for the NEMA standard. Um, next is some of the settings for the uh, controller actuation type. And, and then with the coordination type, uh, that, that is right here. And I will go into a little bit more explaining this in, in a bit. And then we have the offset settings. We have offset reference. So you get to pick what reference um, your corridor will, will choose. Uh, and then down a little bit further, we have minimum green and walk. That's right here defined with eight. And then the walk is defined with five. You can see, uh, well, you can't really see it, but if I close out, you would be able to see that the minimum green was set for eight seconds and then the walk was set for five seconds when I did default signalization. And then lastly here, a very important setting that, that a lot of our users overlook 
is this pedestrian walking speed within within global defaults. I did this on purpose. It's set for 3.94 seconds, which is not the US standard. The US standard is 3.5 feet per second. And um, what this means is that you can see right here, the pedestrian speed for optimization basically shortens the flashing don't walk phase uh, with 3.94 seconds. And so when you optimize, it's going to be um, looking at that, what is needed for the flashing don't walk phase and it, and it impacts how the signal is optimized. So it's really important to make sure this is set to the standard that you wanna use for your corridor. And so I'm gonna close out of global settings and actually redo this to show how important the setting is. So I'm gonna click OK to exit. And I'm gonna to go to this pedestrian walking speed and change it to 3.5 for the US standard. And then I'm gonna go in and do a create default signalization again. And you'll see that this flashing don't walk time changes. There you go, change by two seconds. So if this was a case where, you know, it was the needed that extra two seconds in the optimization, then, then that would make a big difference. Okay, so I'm gonna move back a little bit in these intersection settings to explain what coordination type means. So if we click on coordination type, there's three types that we can choose from. Um, the first type is free running. Free running means that the traffic signal controller doesn't have a set cycle length and is running with, a, with fully actuated detection, basically. Um, so that, that's one type. The second type is uh, time of day coordinated. And that means that the signal has a set cycle length and is in coordination with other signals within the same coordination group in Vistro. And the last is time of day pattern isolated. And that means the signal has a set cycle length, but is, is, it is not placed in coordination with other signal groups. And it's kind of just out on its own doing its own thing. Um, and I will click on this time of day pattern isolated and show you that there are, when, once you click on that, some of the settings get grayed out um, just because they're not needed like offset and offset reference. Um, and for this example, I'm gonna go back to coordinated. The next setting is the actuation type. And uh, if I click on that, again, there's three settings. The first one is fixed time. Uh, it consists of predetermined signal timing values and it's not based on detection. And it pretty much always maxes out because it's not based on detection. This is like the pre-time setting in synchro. Next is the semi-actuated control. Um, this contains some lanes with detection and it, and it influences the signal operations with some detection. Often with semi-actuated, the major street through lanes um, aren't operating with detection, but the left turn lanes are, or the minor street is operating with detection and, with semi-actuated. And then finally, we have fully actuated control. This sets uh, detection on all the lanes uh, that it, and it influences the signal operation with all the lanes. Um, but for this example, we're gonna leave it on fixed time, just so we have a fixed time um, actuation type within our model. Uh, if I cruise through some of these other intersections, this one next to it is semi-actuated. Uh, and then this last one is set for fully actuated. So we have a, a variety. Okay. And then within uh, the intersection settings, again, we have offset. This is where you would put the offset value. Um, and then here's the offset reference, as we mentioned before. Um, you may notice now within Vistra 2020, we do have the offset references that are in NCHRP report 812. Um, these are those standard reference callings and, and offset points. Um, so that, that's a change within Vistra 2020. And then uh, the, the actual value 
sets that internal clock within within the signal controller and it keeps the the signals within coordination along the corridor so now we're ready to look into local optimization settings so um, to, to get to the local optimization settings, you go under the signal control tab up here on the menu, and then you scroll down to the local optimization, and it pulls up the local optimization menu. The first thing you see is that you have two strategies or two functions. Um, one is volume to capacity ratio. Um, this is balancing the volume to capacity ratio. And then the second one is a minimized critical delay, movement delay strategy. So you can choose which one of these depending on, on what you're trying to achieve. And then the, um, the second setting is split optimization uh, or split and cycle time optimization. Uh, for this example, we're gonna choose split and cycle time optimization. So you can click that radio button. And as soon as we do that, there's the, the options that open up to have the, the cycle be optimized. We have an upper bound and a lower bound um, with, so that when we go through the iterations, we know where the cycle length should be. And then we also have a step size and that determines the, the um, gap between the cycle lengths that are actually evaluated. So in this example, we're gonna change this to 60, which is what it is. And then we're in this upper bound, we're gonna change to 150, because um, typically agencies don't want anything super long. And then with this step size, we're just gonna change that to five. So it's gonna go through gaps of five seconds. And then there's a, another setting. If you want to use this, it's called tri-set. You can click on that and it's an array of, um, of cycle lengths that you could try. So if you have favorite cycle lengths, you can pick an array of them. Or if you have one specific cycle length in mind, you could just type in one specific cycle length to actually run the optimization with. But let's go back to, to um, between the boundaries. And then when all this is set, you have the option to immediately just optimize all intersections or you can save settings uh, for the next time you need to run a local optimization. And so we're actually gonna click save settings right now. And that closes out the menu. Um, that's the first way to do local optimization is through that process and then click optimize all intersections. The second way to do local optimizations is, is how you saw before with create default signalization that did the local optimization. Um, the second time you click default signalization though, only the splits are optimized, it's not the cycle time. So that's a, a little warning there. Um, a third way to optimize locally is with the optimization buttons up here in the top toolbar. They're the first one, that's the stopwatch, that uh, optimizes the split and cycle time. And then the second one optimizes just the splits. And uh, if you click this optimize split and cycle time, you can see it uses the settings that we saved previously. So that's important to make sure you save those settings so you can call them up every time. And then the final way to do local optimization is with this automatic optimization toggle. Um, this toggle, if you check it on, it optimizes splits only. And uh, if, you, if you check it, when you update items like lane configuration, volumes, control types, uh, or some timing settings, the signals will automatically update. So for example, we're on this intersection over here that we just created, and I want to make the northbound through lane four lanes, something, something a little ridiculous. There you go, there's four lanes. And then when I hit okay, 
you can see that the splits have automatically optimized a little bit due to that four lane change. Now there's not a lot of volume there, so it's not really going to change all that much. Let's just do that, undo this. There we go. So one more time. There, so it's back the way we had it. Um, this is a, a very nice tool because you can check the toggle when you need automatic optimization and when you don't need it you can turn it off um, that that kind of sets vistro apart from synchro a little bit because in synchro there's there's times where your signal is automatically optimized when you don't want it to um, but at least in vistro you have a choice with automatic optimization next topic we're gonna that's on our agenda is coordination groups and um, what Vistro calls a coordination group is basically what a zone is in Synchro. And um, since in Vistro we have zones for our TIA, TIA functionality and in Visum and Visum we have zones, we decided to call this functionality something else. So that's why it's called coordination groups. But again, it functions the same way as zones in Synchro. Um, to view the coordination groups, you go back to the signal control menu, and then you go down to edit coordination groups. And you can add coordination groups with the uh, plus icon. So I'm going to add one coordination group there. You can see the number two was created. And then you can uh, delete it if you wanted to delete it with the, the wastebasket or the trash can. And then also you can rename the coordination groups. So for number one, I'm gonna rename the coordination group to Manning Drive. And for number two, we don't have another corridor, but <laughs> I'm gonna call it other, just so you can see what it looks like in the lists. Okay. And then I'm gonna click okay here. And then we need to assign the coordination group. You can see with the intersection that we just created, if you look over here, the coordination group is not assigned. You get the, the hashtag or the hash there, um, or I guess the line. Um, so we're gonna assign it to an intersection, but first let's turn on the coordination group graphic parameter. That's under the show intersection info. And if you, pop out the, the pop out menu, go down to coordination group and click it, you can see that we don't have any coordination group assigned at our intersection. And so when I start changing these, you'll see the coordination group popping in for each intersection. So I'm gonna change the first one to Manning and immediately you see one pop in because it's coordination group one. And now I'm gonna go over to the next intersection and change the coordination group, and then go to the next one, then change the coordination group, and then go to the last one and change the coordination group. So the graphic parameters is a, is a good check just to make sure you have the corridor coded to the, the right coordination group. And now that we have the coordination group set, um, we can set a, uh, a master controller to our corridor. Now this is an optional step in Vistro, you don't have to do this, but since a lot of coordinated systems in the field have a master controller, uh, I thought I would show you. And um, the master controller locks this uh, offset value to zero. So um, some of these actually have offsets, this, yeah, this one has uh, 118 there. So when you select the master controller for that intersection, it will revert that offset to zero, but then adjust all of the other offsets to the adjacent intersections within that same coordination group relative to the master. All right, so we wanna make controller number two, the master an example. Um, again, if we go back to the show intersection info, we can click controller number and that will show which one is intersection two. That's this one right here. And then, you know, there's intersection three there. 
So if we click on intersection two, we see that it has 118 seconds for the current cycle length. And if I click on intersection three right next to it, you see that it has zero seconds as the current cycle length, okay? I'm gonna go back to intersection two so you can see it change. Um, when I open the um, edit coordination groups again, under edit, oh, I'm sorry, under signal control, edit coordination groups, we'll go to coordination group one and change the master controller to intersection, or I'm sorry, to signal controller two. And when I do that and click OK, you'll see this 118 turn to zero. There. So it changed to zero, which means now intersection two is the master. And if I go to intersection three, it was zero, but now it's 82. So it, it has also updated um, because it is no longer the master controller. Okay, so now that we've set a master controller, we're ready to uh, look, on, look at the network optimization settings. Um, but first, I want to uh, turn on the cycle length graphic parameter. Again, we go back to the intersection uh, numbers here, and you can see the, um, the controller cycle length graphic parameter here. And we have a, a bunch of different cycle lengths within our corridor, which a corridor this small, it's not a good idea to have that. So we're going to optimize it. Um, we go back to the signal control menu, uh, and then we go to network optimization. This time, not local. This time, we're doing network optimization. And it pulls up the network optimization menu. Now, the first thing you see in the network optimization menu is define the objective function. Okay, The, the two fields here here that you have in this option, these are weights for the delays and stops that are used to calculate the performance index for optimization. Uh, generally, the, the stop weight, it's a lower number um, because this is the total number of stops across the intersections being optimized. So uh, that's a lot of stops. So this weight is generally lower. And Vistro Help has a little bit more information on, on the objective function. If you're interested, you can just go to the, the help menu up here and the, there's an online help. Um, next, you can select the method of optimization. Uh, you have two methods. You have one, genetic, and then the second one is hill climb. Genetic is more a robust and customizable method that includes closing criteria. And hill climb is a simpler, faster method, but the optimization may close without actually finding the, the optimal solution. It'll give you a solution and it may be a good solution, but it may not be the optimal solution, uh, especially if the starting number of solutions is, is low here. And you can see that hill climb only starts with uh, a, a set of 10 starting solutions, as opposed to the genetic method uh, starts with a maximum number of iterations of 100. Adam, okay. sorry for interrupting. Yes. Um, if There's uh, a few comments about the, the lagging of the screenshot, so maybe if you can just take a little bit of, uh, if, if there's ones where you're flipping quickly uh, to and from, just maybe hang on a little bit longer for the screen to catch up. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so um, when we click to the genetic um, method, we, we have the maximum number of iterations. We have a population size. And the generally speaking, the larger the population size, the better your, uh, optimal solution you can find, just generally speaking. And then there's two closing criteria here in the last two fields. Uh, the first one is how many generations uh, the calculation goes through without finding an improvement. And then the second one is kind of like a percent threshold of a minimum improvement. And again, the Vistra help can kind of clarify these parameters a little bit more. 
then next, we can select the coordination groups that we want to optimize. Um, if you click on all, that would optimize both of the coordination groups that we have in our system. Uh, maybe you have eight coordination groups. Um, it would optimize every single one. If you hold down shift, you can select multiple coordination groups. So maybe if you only want to select two or three out of eight, you could do that by holding down shift and clicking. Or, or you could just select one coordination group, which in our case, that's what we're going to do is select one coordination group. Okay. And then the next settings, I'm going to expand this a little bit more. Um, the next settings we have is optimize split and or cycle time. And you notice that the box is unchecked. With an unchecked box, that basically means this part will be skipped and it will only, in this case, optimize the offsets. So we want to optimize the split and cycle times. So we will check that box. And as soon as we check that box, we have an option to select only split or split and cycle time. We're going to select the split and cycle time. And similar to the local optimization, uh, we get an upper and lower bound. And then there's this setting that says allow, re allow reduction from optimum split. Um, if you want to um, have a better optimization for the entire corridor, it may not be the optimum split for that particular intersection. But for um, this example, I'm just going to change that to, to zero just so the calculation can run a little bit faster. Okay. And for again, for our agencies, we're going to use 60 seconds. And then the upper bound, we're going to use 150 seconds. And then the step size, we're going to use five seconds. And then for the, the offset settings, we want to optimize our offsets between all of four intersections we have in our corridor. And so you would check that. And then you can select a precision that you want your offsets to be calculated as. Um, we're just going to default with one second in this example. And then lastly, we have allow lead lag optimization. So if, if your agency allows lagging, um, you can check this box. And then Vistro will find the best solution for the left turns and either a leading or lagging configuration. Um, but if your agency doesn't allow lagging, then you should leave this box unchecked. Uh, for our example, we're gonna leave it unchecked. And as, like with local optimization before, you can run the optimization from this menu. That's one way to do it. Or again, you can save settings. Um, we're gonna save settings. Because, we're gonna save settings because we don't have our optimization routing set yet. And we wanna do that first. Okay, so we save settings, the menu went away. And so let's talk about routing. Um, routing, if you look over on the left toolbar, there is a, uh, a box in the upper left that says route. Um, an optimization route in Vistro allows you to view the time-space diagram and to see the optimization results on that time-space diagram. It also allows you to add a weight to certain routes over other routes and you'll see that um, at the end, um, but it, it, it's um, mostly used, I would say, for the, the, for the visualization of the time-space diagram. To draw a route, you click on the box, the button number one, and then you go from one end of your model. Um, we're gonna start on the left side here. You go to the uh, outside leg grip and click, and you can see we start getting a purple line. And I could click through every single intersection, um, but Vistar is smart enough if I go to the end to basically just include all of those intersections in, in one go. 
So that's what I'm gonna do. I dragged it all the way to the east side. And now I'm going to double click and it closes that route out. And you can see that there are two push pens, one at each end, and now the route is a green color. Okay. And now that we have at least one route defined, we can go up to the network optimization button, the workflow button up here in our, our upper toolbar. And if I click on that, you can see that one route has been created in this table here. And so far I don't have a time space diagram yet because I haven't run the network optimization and I have tons of different cycle links. Okay, so I created one route, that's the eastbound route. So I can give it a name called eastbound. Okay. And what happens if you want to create a route in the opposite direction? Well, you can click on that, that row, right click to open the context menu, and there is a toggle that says create verse, reverse route. And so I'm going to click, uh, click that create reverse route. And it creates a copy of that route, but it's oriented in the opposite direction. Um, and I can rename this westbound now. Now, one thing to note, when you create a reverse route, please pay attention to one-way streets. If, you, if you're on a one-way street and you create a reverse route going the wrong way on a one-way street, um, that, could, that could cause you some problems, um, but just, just keep that in mind when, you, when you're creating your routing. Okay. And so um, we can run the optimization now, now that we have our routing set up. So over on the right side of this screen, there's this network optimization button that is exactly like the network optimization button under signal control, the signal control menu. So it's just like a shortcut. I'll go ahead and click that. It brings in the settings that I previously saved, which is good. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and run that optimization right now. So I can click the run optimization button. Now when the optimization is running, please be patient. Sometimes the, the screen goes black, it goes white, it goes blank. Um, it's chugging through the calculations. I know um, if, you, if you have very specific settings here, sometimes it could take a little bit longer than you're expecting. So again, just be patient during this process. And then after uh, a certain point in time, you will start seeing a, um, a graph pop up going through the optimization process here. Yep, there it is, it just launched up. And it's going through all of the calculations um, within, this, within this graph. Graph, And you can see at the bottom here, it says best score 86.5. What does that mean? Okay, the best score is basically the, the score of the cycle time that, um, that is the lowest, and that is the one that's going to be used for the optimization. And you can see what that is if you click on the, the lines in this table, um, you can see what 86.5 corresponds to. In this case, it is the yellow line. I mean, they're all on top of each other, but it's yellow line. Uh, and that corresponds to 130 seconds. And so when I click OK, you will see the, um, the intersection cycle lengths change to 130 seconds. So let's do that. Okay, and if I zoom in, the route kind of covers it right now. But if I zoom in, you see 130 seconds at all of the intersections. Okay, and I'll let it, the lag kind of catch up here. And also now that I've optimized, I have a time space diagram and you can see how that just popped in um, on, on the right side of the network optimization workflow panel. Um, so now I want to give the westbound 
direction a weight. And so I wanna give it a weight of two. And I could do it right here in the base scenario, but this is a really good case where you may wanna use um, the, the scenario management in, within Vistro. So what I can do, I can go up to the scenario management toolbar up top, click down the drop arrow, and then click the plus button to add a scenario for uh, my weighted scenario here. So I'm gonna click the plus button and it's creating a copy of the base scenario. And I go back into that menu again and right click. There's a context menu that says rename and I'm gonna rename this to wait and then hit enter. And you can see now that scenario one has been renamed to wait. And now that I'm in with it, within this new scenario, I can change the weight for the westbound over here to two. And once I do that, I want to rerun the network optimization to see what happens. So I can click network optimization. I want to use the same settings that I had before, and then I will just hit run optimization. And again, we have to wait a little bit uh, as it goes through the calculations. But this uh, using scenario, it just illustrates how powerful uh, vCero is. It, it's able to keep all of your experiments and all of your work documented within one file, which is a, it's a big benefit and saves you a lot of headaches trying to manage multiple copies of, of different files. Okay, so it's chugging along. It's still thinking. We added a weight, so it's a little extra complexity uh, to the calculations that need to be ran. There it goes. So now you can see that there's a little bit more separation in the plot now between the various cycle times. And it's almost done. Okay, it's finished. And now we have a best score of 101. Before I think it was like 86, but now it's 101. And if we look at the, the table again, uh, or I'm sorry, the, the, the lines on the plot and hover over it, we see 101 looks like, 101.3, looks like it corresponds to 120 second cycle length. And when I click OK, we will see the cycle lengths on our on each intersection change to 120. And then we'll also see the time space diagram shift when I click OK. So I'm gonna click OK. And you saw a slight adjustment to the time space diagram. And again, if I zoom in a little bit, you can see that the intersections have changed to 120 seconds. And so lastly, um, for routes, we can draw routes around corners. Um, so it doesn't have to be a straight line on a corridor. It could also be like kind of like a, a route that turns corners and blocks and things like that. So what I'm going to do is open up an example file um, that has a Texas type diamond. So if I go to help and I go to open example directory, under the signal controllers uh, folder, there is a Texas Diamond Core Overlaps, yeah. So this is the, the file I wanna show you how routing works uh, coming off of frontage roads and freeway ramps and things like that. So I'm gonna drag that into Vistro, which is very cool with Vistro, you just drag it in. Hopefully it's thinking. Oops, I gotta save the file, let's save it. And now it's opening up the, the tight diamond. Okay, and let's just give it a few seconds for the for everything to refresh through the connection. All right, so now you can see in the network optimization window, I have a lot more routes than in the previous example. I have seven. 
uh, we have a route going westbound, one route going eastbound, and then here is the route that bends a corner. This is the frontage road or the freeway ramp, uh, how Texas does it, where you want to coordinate the left turn off the ramp with the next signal. And then you can view that time space diagram at the same time because the routes connect the, the coordination with the time space diagram. Um, so this is a, a really advantageous tool um, to, to kind of visualize the turns within Vistro and what is actually going on. Uh, you can even see too that uh, I had a U-turn route I mean, this may or may not be important, but it depends on, on your use case. Uh, maybe there's a target on one side of this I-35 interchange and a Walmart on the other side, and those people like to shop. Um, so then you could pri prioritize that U-turn. Um, but then you see we do get a time-space diagram with each route. Now let's look at um, the route three here. This is uh, this left turn. And let's explain some of the other settings on the uh, the time space diagram. I'm sorry. Let's look at route one. That might be better. Um, if you look at the flow, uh, currently this is the flow view. We can change the drop down to arterial bands, and you can see what the band actually is for that signal, or you can go back to what the flow is for that signal. Um, you can see what the reverse direction is. This is showing the westbound route, but I want to also see the eastbound route on my time-space diagram. There's a checkbox here that says show reverse direction. I can click that and it will show the other direction. Um, and then lastly, you can change the scale of the time-space diagram. Right now I show 290 seconds, but what if I want to change it to 145? It makes the scale of this smaller. Um, within the time-space diagram, there's, there's a, a scale that shows you the distance between the intersections. It shows you the name uh, of, the, of the intersection nodes. And it also gives you a summary of the cycle time that's there, the offset, and then the coordination group. In this case, it's a Texas uh, tight diamond, so it's the same signal controller and I didn't assign a coordination group. Uh, that's why it's blank there. And then um, you're able to print the time-space diagrams. So this is the, the last thing I want to show you. If we go to File, uh, Print, Report, this opens up the print window. And uh, I'm going to give a file name for, for the PDF I'm going to print. And let's call this, um, just call it time space. Hit save. Oops, I can't save to that. <laughs> Interesting. Um, yep, so we're going to call it time space PDF. Okay, and I could fill in this other information, but for the sake of time, let's just leave it blank. Uh, I'm going to hit the select report tab. And we have all of these reports we could print, but I'm really just interested in the time-space diagram reports on this side. So I'm going to use the checkbox that unchecks, or the uncheck all checkbox, and it unchecks everything. And then on the select graphical reports to print, I'm only going to check the time-space diagram reports. And then I want to open the PDF when it's done printing, so I check that box down at the bottom and then I'll click print. And so it chucks through um, creating the time-space diagrams and on all the figures. And it pops up on my other screen, I think, yep. So here's the report that's printed with the routing and the time-space diagrams. Um, it's a it's linked based, so you can use the bookmarks within Vistro to, to go between each route if you want to. Um, this shows the route. And then if you scroll down, then it shows the time-space diagram. And as you go through the report, it, it shows each one that we had listed. Okay, so one final comment here before I conclude. 
Um, I would like to plug our next PTV talks over multimodal applications. Um, we use the same route and time space diagram procedures I just talked about to create uh, special optimizations for, for things like uh, bicycle lanes or cycle tracks or transit, like a separated transit facility or something. It is possible to view the time space diagram for those cases. And so um, the tools I just presented are very flexible and applicable to many things. And so tune in next time, and then I'm gonna do some examples to show how that works.